Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host between Taramina and Orient Native Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Native Television. A lot to talk about this week here. Um, a lot of school districts are on spring break this week, so... Well, we got to break down, obviously, the girls' basketball um, postseason. We're going to talk about the shortcomings and, of course, um, um, obviously, um, you know, we've had some, um, we've, we've got to talk about some um, changes within some several programs. So we're going to bring that up uh, on this episode of the podcast this week. Um, we're going to obviously talk about West Bloomfield's um, Division One State Championship, their second in three years, and also, um, you know, how that game with Rockford really was one of the most incredible games and probably like one of the most like you kind of like put want want to put a storybook especially in that game against Rockford um like that will probably be a, a memory that'll be in the lives of West Bluefield fans um a lo- I mean and everyone there who was at that game and I mean in East Lansing um just that game was just absolutely insane so we're going to break that one down um but we're going to look at a course we're going to look we're going to let say quarterfinal first. Um, West Bloomfield didn't have an issue with Temperance Bedford. Um, really wasn't much of a contest with them. Um, as expected, it wouldn't have been much of a contest with them. Um, and then, you know, and then, of course, you have Stony Creek who took on Grand Blank. Um, Stony Creek coming out their first district championship, uh, or first regional championship um, after knocking out Macomb, Dakota. Um, and then they had to play a uh, juggernaut in Grand Blank, which was just, you know, when I looked at that score and I just said to myself, you know what? I mean, I just couldn't believe what happened in that game. Um, Stony Creek was just absolutely just outmatched. They were just outmatched by Grand Blank. I mean, like it wasn't, it wasn't close. Um, Grand Blank just ran a. Two, they ran a full core trap. Basically, just made it made it made life really difficult for Stony. Um, and then all of a sudden, like it just it just it just snowballed. Um, it just snowballed, and that score, and then that score was um, and that score was um forty nine twenty seven. That was not even a, that was not even close. That wasn't even that was a blowout. Um. Sarah LaPrairie had 11 points. Um, and in that game, Stoney had a chance. Where they, I mean, they had a terrible start to start the game and then got it within 15-10, and then that was it. Um, and then Graham Blank just picked up the energy and just basically just ran all over them. Um, Stoney Creek finished the year. They won um, 20 games. Um they lose Sarah LaPrairie, who ended up getting her um one thousandth career point at Stony Creek. Um I mean she had eleven in that game. Um nobody else for them was really in double figures. Um Chelsea Bishop led Grand Blank with nineteen points. Um you know, they had a good year. I mean, Stony had a nice year, but and I'm gonna mention Stony Creek a lot in the shortcomings, why I don't. I'm not. I don't like the trajectory the program's going, and you know, there's a lot of concerns heading into next year with Stony Creek when it comes to program strengths. Um, then that is going to be something that Coach Columbus Williams has to address, and we're going to talk about that in the shortcomings. Um, I mentioned that real clear in the shortcomings. Why, you know, they got some concerns. I mean. I mean, yes, you do lose the Prairie. That's a big loss. You, you do lose Faith Conlon. That's another loss. But when you lose the Prairie, you know, you got questions with Stoney and say, are they ready? You know, you look at players like um, like Merrick Schwabach. You look at um, the Avash sisters. Um, and then also you look at, um, you know, are the Fulkerson sisters, are they ready? And there's a lot of questions when I look at that with Stoney Creek is, can they take the next step? Um, you know, and can Columbus Williams put a stamp on this program? And obviously you look at people are going to say, well, um, you know, with, you know, Columbus Williams, when he took over, you know, obviously 
there was a lot of Kellen James' stuff in there um, that they ran, um, particularly defensively. Um, they did change a lot of defense, a little bit of defensive sets for them. But, you know, you look at next year, you know, that's going to be the year for Stoney is how are they going to transition fully into Williams' system? I mean, that is going to be the question. Um, program strength, a big concern for Stoney, um, which is going to be something to really watch for with them. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll mention Stony Creek a lot in the shortcomings. Um, so now let's look at West Bloomfield. Um, when I look at West Bloomfield, you know, the game against Rockford, and it was a re and West Bloomfield had a lot of motivation against them. I mean, they had, I mean, they just lost them in the state finals last year, 40 36. All you t- hear about, you heard about in the press conference was, you know, we want to, we want to get back what we lost. I mean, all Darren McAllister said in his interview to Civic Center TV that they were on a mission to go back to the state finals to get back what they wanted, to get back what was theirs. And they were in camouflage. And, you know, you, 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 you know about that. You knew it was coming. I mean, and then, Going up against an opponent that you know quite well, a team that you're familiar with, you know, obviously the last two years they played, West Bloomfield had to go through Rockford in any sort of capacity. It was two years ago they played in the um, regional semi and the state semifinals. Um, and West Bloomfield won that one 66 63. It was a high scoring game. Um, and then last year, the 40-36 loss um, for West Bloomfield against Rockford when um, Anna Winnipeg went nuts. She had 20 in that game. Um, you know, actually it was Grace Lyons that went off for 20 in that game. Um, you know, and then, and then you know, West and then Rockford this year, a little bit more younger team. Um, but you still had Winnipeg. You still had Grace Lyons. Um, you had um, Mary Higgins. Um, Higgins? Um, who uh, who really blossomed, and she's only a sophomore. Um, it didn't look good early in that game. I mean, for West Bloomfield, it really didn't look good early. Um, you know, Rockford was hitting shots. Um, Summer Davis got in the foul trouble, had two fouls on her. Um, it did not look good for. It really didn't look good for West Bloomfield early. I mean, it really. When you look at that match, when you look at that, and it, it really it got ugly. I mean, it really, it really got ugly um, for West Bloomfield. I mean, like it got to a point to where you know they were down um, twenty nine twenty at the half. You know, and Rockford was basically West Bloomfield tried to trap, they tried to press, and then all of a sudden Rockford took advantage of the press, got easy baskets inside. And then, and then you're looking at, okay, um, you know, in the th- early third quarter, it didn't get any better for West Bloom. It really didn't get any better for them. And they were down 35-22 in the middle part of the third quarter. So here's my analogy for West Bloomfield. And I try to explain this to West to um Tyler Kept who who's been on my pod, um does a heck of a job at Civic Center TV. So I thought about the Ahsoka series. If you haven't watched that series, um you should watch that series on YouTube. And there was the Force Ghost of Anakin Skywalker. Of course, we know Anakin Skywalker. Um, they meet in the world of, um, in the world of, um, it's another world. I can't remember the name, but it's a Star Wars term. So Anakin tells Ahsoka that, you know, for, that she still has a chance, you know, to overcome, you know, she just lost a fight, you know, and it's kind of like what happened with West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield lost to Rockford in the state final a year ago. So West Bloomfield, and then things were going really bad for them. You're down 13. 
So you have a ch- so you have a choice, you know. Anakin tells Ahsoka, you know, you have a choice to either to live or die, you know. And they fight a couple times until Ahsoka makes her choice to live, and we know how that story ended. Um, West Bloomfield faced that choice to fold or battle back. They chose to battle back. And they chose to put everything on the line in that game. And they started creep. They started getting in that 13-point deficit. Started rallying. Got it within six at the end of the third quarter. So it was 39-33. And then they somehow tied it up. 39-39. But Destiny Washington fouled out. I think it was about five minutes ago in the game. <laughs> and... Now West Boom is out their starting point guard. So now you have to move Summer Davis to play point. Um, so now you look at Rockford is now up 45-42 with about six seconds to go in the game. And then here comes Summer. Summer takes the ball, hands it to her sister India. India takes a shot, and the ball bank shots in. And there's pandemonium on the West Bloomfield sideline. Um, you know, they were celebrating like crazy. And, you know, I know Coach Jamie Gintz got his team back to the um, to the huddle. And, you know, you're 45-45. So, here's the emotional part of this. If you look at you know, you look at a course on West Bloomfield side, there's pandemonium, there's emotion, you know, you just tied it up, you just gone to overtime. Um, and then on Rockford's side, you see the Rockford student section all decked in orange doing surrender cobra. Just shocked. You know, when you look at West Bloomfield, if you haven't seen West Bloomfield basketball, you know, the girls' basketball program. You know, you know these girls are resilient. You know that they are. Um, so, and then to see that picture, um, Matt Maurer did a heck of a job of that picture after India's three point, three point bank shot to send the game to overtime, and you know, and basically it it basically told the entire story. It basically said, "We're not going to be denied here. We're not going to be denied." And when the overtime session started, they got Winnipeg to commit her fifth foul. Winnipeg was killing them with 20 points. And then they got her to commit her fifth, which basically turned the entire game around. Um, and West Bloomfield really did a, they focused a lot on Grace Lyons. Um, they did a pretty nice job shutting her down. Um, they paid a lot more attention to Higgins. Um, and, you know, and then, of course, both Davis sisters um, did their magic. And <laughs> it ended up being where West Bloomfield ended up making a um, couple free throws um, to seal it. And it was a... Um, the final of that one was 54-47, um, which was just, you know, incredible considering where West Bloomfield and Rockford was in the middle of the third quarter. Um, West Bloomfield made that choice to battle back, you know, and I think that's the perfect analogy to describe that game was that sequence in the Ahsoka series when Anakin was talking to her. Um, now people want to say, well, you're really confusing me here, but you got to look at it from a basic concept. That's really what it was, was West Bloomfield had a choice to either fold or battle back. And they chose to battle back. Um, summer of 22, India had 17 that game. Um, 
you know, when I look at that game and you think about it, you kind of think about it, that game to me was a de facto state championship game because it was the top two teams in the state. I mean, Rockford, they knocked off West Ottawa, Holland West Ottawa, um, in a really tight game that they needed the fourth quarter to really pull away. Um, so when I look at everything was pointing to that matchup between West Bloomington and Rockford. I mean, it really pointed to that matchup because it were the two best teams in the state all year long. Rockford, a little bit younger team this year. They lost a lot of senior experience from that team that won the state title. They still had Winnipeg. They still had Lions. Um, and, you know, they they had West Bloomfield beat for about two and a half quarters. You know, they had they they were the ones that were the aggressors in the first half. They were the ones early in the third quarter. They were the ones that, you know, they were the ones that controlled the tempo. I mean, they had West Bloomfield on their heels. I mean, West Bloomfield couldn't make a shot. They couldn't make, they went on a drought and foul trouble really hurt them. Especially when he got the one, especially when he had the Davis, I mean, when he had Summer Davis and foul trouble. When you look at the game last year, Rockford, what they did was took advantage of the foul trouble they West Bloomfield had. Um, the Davis sisters, both of them, had really didn't have great shooting nights against them. And then this time around, I think West Bloomfield learned from that and basically had to basically rely on each other. And that's what they did. That's really what they did in that game. Was they relied on each other. They found a way to win that game. Got the game to overtime. Could you just imagine if India didn't make that shot? I mean, if India doesn't make that shot, I'll be honest with you, Rockford's back-to-back -back state champions. I'll be flat out honest with you. Because if she doesn't make that shot, you know, and, you know, obviously you talk, I mean, I, and I watched the press conference last year, you know, what India Hendricks, what um, Kendall Hendricks said was they're coming for revenge. You know what I mean? And, and they delivered on that. They delivered on it. And seeing that shot, you know, that India made, I mean, that bank shot went in, it was, you knew West Bloomfield wasn't going to be denied. You knew that they weren't. And, you know, and it showed. It really showed in that game. It really did. And then West Bloomfield, of course, had to come back to Breslin Center the next day. <laughs> Took on Grand Blank, a team that they knew really well. They played them in the last game of the year. <coughs> won that one 67-28. Um, behind the... um. They were dominant that game. Um, West Bloomfield used their balanced scoring. Um, both Davis sisters um, were pretty balanced. Kendall Hendricks had a nice game. Um, Sheridan Beal had a nice game. Um, West Bloomfield really had no issue with Grand Blank uh, winning that one 60 to 30. Um, and in that game, you really look at in that one, West Bloomfield was the dominant team. I mean, they were they were clearly Clearly the dominant team in that game. Um, Summer had 14. Hendricks had 13. India Davis, India had 11. Destiny Washington had 10 points. Um, pretty balanced scoring on the night for um, for West Bloomfield. I mean, that game really, it really proved um, in that game was just West Bloomfield really, they were the dominant team. I mean, they, they were the dominant team. They... They made Chelsea Bishop work. Um, you know, obviously, you look at what Grand Blanks wins this year um, in the postseason. He saw a lot of dancing. Um, West Bloomin made sure they didn't dance. And for Grand Blank, their two losses, um, the one to close out the year was to West Bloomfield, and then he had the state final loss to West Bloomfield. So, 
that kind of tells you what where West Bloomfield was at. And you look at the balance scoring in that night. Um, you know, West Bloomfield, obviously, they can beat you in different ways. They can beat you in, you know, they can, I mean, they can run you out of the gym. They can slow step you. I mean, they can do whatever they want. Their only loss this year was to Toledo Anthony Wayne, Ohio. I mean, and I I watched that game, and that was going like, they had their way with me in that one. But it actually, honestly, that loss humbled them because you know how hard it is to go undefeated? And it, it's really hard to go undefeated. You have to experience a loss or somewhere. You got to experience a loss. And West Bloomfield experienced that loss and it got them more hungrier and it got them ready for the postseason. I mean, you look at West Bloomfield's pass. It was not easy. I mean, started with North Farmington. Um, then they had to play Farm Tills Mercy. Um, Mercy, of course, you know, they had them in the first half. It was only a three-point game. And then West Puma just went and just tore him to shreds in the second half. Um, and then they had to play Detroit Renaissance in the semifinals. In the regional semifinals, we know how they can play it. West Bloomfield actually can match up speed for speed with them. Um, and then they end up winning that one. And then they played Royal Oak. Of course, Royal Oak was a real, was a big surprise this year, um, getting to the regional finals for the first time in um, you know, in school history. Um, West Bloom ended up winning that one pretty handily. Had no issue with Tempered's Bedford. Um, and then we talked about Rockford, and then we talked about um, then we talked about um the game with Grand Blank. So when you look at the career of the seniors at West Bloomfield. A lot of success was a good way to, to describe it. You got Destiny Washington is going to be going to play um in the um, Missouri, at Loyola Chicago. Um, I think they're in the Missouri Valley. Um, and then you have both Davis sisters going to Georgia um, next year for college hoops. So when you look at the success, I'll be curious to see how the Davis sisters adapt playing in the SEC. Because I think Destiny Washington's going to have no problem adjusting to life in the Missouri Valley. Um, I think she could be a very dangerous player in that conference. Now, the Davis sisters are going to have much more of a challenge playing in the SEC. Because you look at teams like, um, you get Tennessee. Um, but then the big one is South Carolina. And we know how Coach John Staley is over there. She is very respected within the Gamecock community, and especially around basketball. I mean, she does a heck of a job with her players. She knows how to motivate them. Um, she's done it. She's, she's done it, whether as an analyst or a basketball or basketball player or even a coach. I mean, she's got a brilliant, talented mind. She's one of the best minds in the game of basketball is Donna Staley. And, you know, and, and I'll be curious to see how the Davis sisters, when they have to play South Carolina in the SEC, now, albeit also you're going to have Texas and Oklahoma coming to that conference, um, which would be very interesting to see how that does. And then you look at other teams in that conference. You have Missouri, you have Kentucky, you have, um, you have, um, Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi, Mississippi State, um, you know, Florida. Um, I mean, like, and then you have, like, um, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, as I mentioned earlier, um, A&M, um, LSU is also in that conference, Louisiana State. They're well coached under Kim Mulaney. Um, is it Mulaney or Malarkey? I think it, I, I just don't know. I just can't pronounce it. You know what I mean? Like, um, but I'll tell you what, Malarkey, I mean, like, she's, LSU's got one of the best teams in the entire country. Um, really talented team. I like LSU a lot. I really think, 
you know, I call I call LSU Louisiana State. Um, but I'll tell you what, I mean, like what she does over there. I know they got a very talented player named Reese over there. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, you got some great competition in the SEC that the Davis sisters are going to walk into. Um, you know, dealing with the likes of South Carolina to the east and Louisiana State to the west. So, a lot of great competition in the, in the SEC. Then, plus, you're getting Texas and Oklahoma into the conference next year. So, it'll be very interesting to see how the Davis sisters' career will look um, considering going into that conference. So, very curious to see how that one goes. Really curious. Um... Now let's go to recapping the season. Um, when you look at the OA this year as a conference, it was a great year around girls basketball. Great year around girls basketball. And you look at, of course, the um, teams that are going to be in, you know, looking at looking ahead to next year, people are going to say, who do you think could be a team to really watch for? Who could be that team that can make a state run? Um, you know, people say, you know, could Clarkson make a run? Could Lake Orion make a run? Um, could Stony Creek make a run? Could Rochester make a run? I mean, there's just so many storylines heading into next year. Um, now, a team I didn't mention in this is Ferndale. Now, people are going to say, well, why didn't you mention Ferndale? I mean, Ferndale had a great year, won 19 games. Um, here's why I don't mention Ferndale. Because... Unless the MHA releases the districts in June and Ferndale's not in a district with Birmingham, Detroit Country Day, if they have to, they're going to either have to deal with Detroit Country Day or have to deal with Birmingham or, or have to deal with Detroit Edison. Detroit Edison won a state title this year in Division II. Um, and we know how good that program is. Now, Ferndale had an incredible run. I mean, they knocked off. Detroit Cast Tech, who's, who went into the regional finals. Um, they did return some key players. Um, they do return some three, they do return three very key players when I look at the Eagles. Um, plus, I know they've been rabid, they've been really excited about the eight, their eighth grade class. And I think that's really been something that a lot of people have been really curious to see with Ferndale is. How is their eighth grade class going to adjust, you know what I mean, to life in high school basketball? They say they're going to handle it well. I've got my doubts. Um, but anytime you return players like, um, you do have a player like um, like, De like Demi Bolton, India Davis, um, Anaya Davis, um, you know, Alea Frost. Um, those three players really, and they were all away players this year. And... You know, and obviously one thing that I've always stressed about Ferndale, the biggest concern I have with them is program strength. That is always going to be the biggest concern I have for Coach Keith Paris. And it doesn't matter what division they go in. If they go with the white, they go with the red. I mean, like, if there's a lot of questions I have with Ferndale. And the reason why I say Ferndale, until... They're going to have to go through Detroit Country Day. They're going to have to go through Detroit Edison. In the girls' game, it's a lot more tougher. You know, obviously, when you look at what Coach Juan Rickman's done or with the boys, they had a, they had a tough time Warren Lincoln, but they had they, but they know they're going to have to go through those teams, and and I think maybe that's why Coach Keith Paris says we're going to need to play tougher competition. So we can play those teams and beat those teams. Here's my take on them. Play them directly. Play them directly. Then you can have an idea what, you know, they're going to have, you know. So that's my suggestion to Coach Paris is play those teams, you know, play. is play um like a Detroit Country Day. Play a Detroit Edison, you know. See where you're at, where you, where you can improve at, you know. And I think that's the reason why. He'll probably say, well, I want to go play, you know, teams in the white or teams in the red, you know, because those teams are proven teams in that, in that, in the league. And they want to, and they want a test of it. 
So I'm curious to see how they're going to handle this. Is, you know, but for me with Ferndale, is until they beat Birmingham Detroit Country Day and Detroit Edison, I don't know if I can see Ferndale, you know, making a run like the boys team did. I just don't know. And there's a lot of questions that I have with Ferndale. Program strength is one. Two, how will they handle life in Division Two when it comes to postseason? And, you know, and can they get by Detroit Country Day and Detroit Edison? I mean, because you know where they're located geographically, they're either going to have to see one of those two teams um, down the line. And, you know, you look at Birmingham and Detroit Country Day, they got a very talented freshman. They do recruit. You look at Detroit Edison, same thing. They recruit. Um, and I know Ferndale's been looking a lot in that Detroit area as well. So it'll be very interesting to see how um, Coach Keith Paris um, handles that team, uh, handles that program. And, I, and can he develop program strength? And that's been the biggest challenge I have with Ferndale um, is program strength. And that's something I hope Coach Juan Rickman, um, who's also the athletic director at Ferndale and also the um, track and cross country coach over there, addresses with, um, with Paris as program strengths. That is where, I mean, long-term program success develops. I mean, like, is if you can develop long-term program strengths. You can't just have one team. You got to handle maybe at least two or maybe three. So that's the area that I think Paris needs to address this offseason is getting more girls to come out and play basketball. Um, and I think that'll help them in the long haul. Um, when I look at other teams around the league, um, teams that I think to keep a really close eye on, um, as I mentioned, um, obviously, you got to wonder where Royal Oak goes from here. Royal Oak's a team that really, you know, when I look at Royal Oak, um, they had a they had a nice year. I mean, Royal Oak had, they didn't win the white this year. Um, mid, near middle of the pack, but they got they 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 got on fire at the right time. I mean, they knocked off um they knocked off um Warren Cousineau in the district final, 43-41, behind an Emmy Valen layup. Um and then they upset um Gross Point North 53 48 behind 24 points from Lucy Freetag. Um so when I look at Royal Oak, it looks like they have really Royal Oak's always been that team that, you know, I think this year was the introduction to the entire region what Royal Oak basketball is about. And they showed it in that game against Gross Point North when they can go in there and just, you know, play a defensive style a game and then the offense got going. And when you look at that matchup, um, there's a lot to like Royal Oak despite them losing seven seniors next year. They still have some key players coming back. Um, so Royal Oak, I think definitely is going to be a team that they're gonna be a, they're gonna be one of the favorites next year. Um, whether they're in the white, I think they're gonna likely stay in the white um, because of that experience. Another team I'm high on that can make a run is Seahome. Why do I say Seahome? Because the the problem I have with Seahome is playing tougher competition. They did not fare well against teams in the red. I mean, they really did not fare well against Clarkston. Didn't fare well against Stony Creek. Even though they were in that game with Stony Creek, they all they should have beat Stony Creek. But you look at Coach Chris Manchester's team, you had the bulk of that team coming back. Um, I mean, there's no reason why this team shouldn't be able to make a run. I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't. And 
but they did they did lose to Bloomfield Hills um to close out the year and they lost them in the district final. So there's a lot of pros and cons when you look at Seaholm, a team that can make a run. But also there's some there I mean like but when you look at Seaholm on the con side of thing, you have to look at them and say Okay, how are they do? How can they do it if you put them against the teams like the Clarkston, like the Lake Orion, like the West Bloomfield, like the Oxford, the likes of you know Stony Creek or Rochester? I know they don't match up very well. So you know, so that's Seahome's an interesting team because of the experience they got coming back. You have Addie Flynn back. You're gonna have um. I mean, yeah, Mary Gumba's coming back. I mean, like, Seaholm could be a team that can make a run, but also there are some cons on that team, you know, when you look at when it comes to playing a tougher schedule, not conference schedule, um, you know, just seeing where you measure up against some of the upper echelons of the division, of the league. So, really, that's really where um, I see where... um where um Seaholm's at and I think that's another team they could make a run but they got some demons they got to get by so and then another team can make a run is Bloomfield Hills I mean Bloomfield Hills they did lose a lot though they did lose a lot um and I've been hearing rumblings Kristen Massey did step down at Bloomfield Hills um I haven't wrote the column yet but I've been hearing a lot of rumors going around there um so when I look at Bloomfield Hills, they got a star in the making in Brianna Young. She is a heck of a player. I mean, I've seen her play. She looks she looks the part of a star player. Um, you do lose Ruby Smith. That's a big loss. Um, program strength looks good over there. What Massey did over there, and she did a great job of this, was building program strength over there. And... You look at Bloomfield Hills' program, they're built for the long run. Their freshman program had a great year. JV, not so much, but, you know, but um, you got to like the direction where they're going. Um, curious to see the new coach will be over there. Um, like I said, it's all rumor going around there, but I've been hearing a lot of rumblings about it. So, but Bloomfield Hills, you want to... What they've done, they've won 32 games in the last two years. And 14 games this season. You share the lead, you share the white with Seahome. You knock them off in the district final, winning your first district title. And then you run to a, in, in, in the Stony Creek. Um, so there's a lot of success with Blue Bay Hills this year. A lot of success. Um, they had an incredible run, incredible season for them. Just an incredible year for them. Um, and then let's look at your, um, the red teams. I mean, who can make some noise? Um, obviously, you know, West Bloomfield, they do lose a lot of talent. You lose both Davis sisters, Destiny Washington. Those are going to be tough players to replace. But you do have Sheridan Beal, Ava Lord, um, you have the Gamble Jones sisters, um, who I'm curious to see how they do um, next season. Um, Jordan Ratliff's a point guard that I think could be a player to watch. London Hall's another one. Um, West Bloomfield's an interesting team to watch next year. Now, are they going to be as good as they've been in the last three years? Probably not, but they're still going to be there. They're in that conversation. <laughs> they have players who've been who experienced success. You know, they've been there. They've been to the mountaintop. They're going to be hungry to get to the mountaintop again. So I'm curious how Coach Jerry McAllister is going to do um, looking at that team um, heading into next year is can he just keep keep the momentum going? I mean, like, even though it's going to be a much different team next year. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, another team I forgot to mention um, is Troy. Now, people say, I forgot to mention Troy. For, I mean, like, Troy and Berkeley are two teams I'm really high on next year. Um, on Troy's case, they got a lot coming back. 
They only lose. I think they lost two seniors. Um, but you do return Diamond Prince. You do return um. You return um. You have Reagan Zider. You have um Carly Hagenbottom. You have Carly Block. You have Kelsey Block. Um, I know a lot of people have been really excited about Macy Zider coming in the program. Um. I mean, like, Laura Guzman's got something going over there. Troy's problem is going to be is it's the mental mindset. It still is, especially in the postseason. Can they win in the postseason? I mean, Troy hasn't been the same team since the state quarterfinal run they had a couple years ago. They really haven't been. Um, But I'm curious to see how Guzman does next year. Really curious to see. And then there is Berkeley. Berkeley, I'm really excited about. I mean, yes, they lose Mavi Nolan. That's going to be a big loss. But you got Avery Wintergarden there. Um, Coach Clay Shaver's got a team that's built over there. Really does. Um, and I think they're going to do well over there. I think they're going to do really well over there. And I think, honestly, you know, Berkeley's a team that I think can make the next step up. I think they're ready. Um, they knocked off, they knocked off Detroit Mumford in the semi, in the, in the district semis, hammered Redford Thurston in the first round, and both those teams won double-digit games this year. Um, Detroit Mumford won, I think, only eight games, but they played a tough schedule, um, in the Detroit Public School League. Um, so, I think they're ready to take that next step. I think they can... If Coach Clay Shaver can toughen up that schedule, I know the record wouldn't be a, won't be as good as it was this year. But if they really toughen up that schedule, especially in a non-conference, I'll tell you what. I don't think anybody wants to see them. I don't think anybody would want to see them. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Adams is another team I'm curious to see. Anytime you return your best player, Faith Zolas, um, that's going to say a lot. I'm curious how they're going to handle the loss of Samantha Blaine. Um, so be curious to see. I mean, we'll have, um, Joe Mulberg back here on the podcast once the districts, um, come out. I want to see his thoughts on that, um, the next, um, couple months. So we'll see. Um, but back to the red, um, mentioned West Bloomfield, um, Stony Creek, as I mentioned here, we talked about them early in the podcast. Um, Anytime you lose Sarah LaPrairie, lose a 1,000, 1,000-point career score, that's going to be a big loss. Um, I think when you look at Stony Creek, obviously they're going to be banking a lot on Merrick Swabak, um, the Avash sisters, um, all three of them, Castilla, Izzy, and um, um, figure out the other one. Um, but um, I think, you know, when you look at, they're banking on those three and Merrick Schlaubach, along with the Fulkerson sisters, um, Taylor and Samantha, um, to really be the backbone of this program. But I have some serious concerns when I look at Stony Creek's program. And when you look at, of course, the ninth grade level, you know, the, ta- the incoming talent coming up from Hart Middle School, um, that could be a serious problem for Stoney. And curious to see if Columbus Williams is ready to handle that. Um, when you, when you look at the program at per, and this is where I, I completely criticize Williams is for not having three programs is you have to build program strength. And I know they know it because you can have a heck of a varsity team, but your JV has to be successful and your freshman has to be successful. And they didn't have a freshman team this year. Now, albeit with Columbus Williams being an experienced assistant at Utica Ford, um, under um, you know, under Coach Matt Joseph, um, they had only two teams. But at Stony Creek, you know, it's important to have three programs. It really is. Because, you know, if you when you look at the program levels, if you don't have three programs, then you're going to struggle. I mean, like, you know, especially at a big school like Stony Creek. I mean, Adams had this problem for a time 
And when Joe Malberg took over that program, he built three programs. And that is very important, having three programs. Um, and then you look at, um, so Stony Creek, they should be good again next year. <laughs> but I'm curious to see, is Merrick Schlaubach ready to take on the role of Sarah LaPrairie? Um, the Avashisters, they keep developing. Um, I mean, obviously, Izzy Avaj is one of the, um, is a lot of people are banking on next year to make the next step. Castilla, obviously, has had a solid year in the post. Um, do I think, are they ready mentally? Um, I don't know if I can answer that question because that Grand Blank game described to me all I need to know about Stony Creek mentally in that game. That's all I needed to know. Um, so I'm very curious to see where they're going to be at next year. Then there's Clarkston. When you look at the Wolves, um, coming off a tough loss to Grand Blank in the regional final, um, game where they should have won that one. Um, you do lose Emmy Valencia. You do lose Claire Walker. Those are going to be big losses. Marley Mazur steps into the starting role. Um, Eliam, you have Eliam Morgan coming back. You have um, you have um, Brooklyn Covert coming back. And then you have um, Eliana Roback coming back for Coach Aaron Gunn now. So there is a nucleus there. There is a nucleus. Um, and I know they're really high on Brooke Bond, who's an eighth grader right now. Um, <coughs> program strength. Um... Excuse me for coughing there for a minute there. You know what I mean? Just battling it out. But on Clarkston, program strength's going to be interesting. Curious to see what players pan out. I mean, like for Clarkston. I mean, obviously they got Nick, you got Nicholson there. Um, I mean, like they got, um, you got, um, who I think could be a really good post for them in the future. Um, they do, they do, ha they do have a couple of talented players coming back. Um, so when I look at Clarkston, um, I think they could be in for a good year. I think they could be in for a really nice year. Um, just really looking at how the Wolves are built. Um, I think they could be really, really good. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Lake Oregon. Lake Oregon returns. Anytime you can win 15 games. After losing nine seniors like they did, um, you're going to be in that conversation. And I think when you look at the Dragons, they could be in that conversation. You turn a very talented player in Izzy Belinsky. You have Charlotte Peplowski coming back. You have Nevaeh Wood. And then your sophomores. I think this summer's key for Coach Bob Bridges and the Dragons. I think it's, it's key. Because they got it, because their sophomores had to develop. You know, obviously, you look at a Danny Hack, a Grace Hohenshine, um, a Riley House. Um, you know, if those sophomores develop, then I think Lake Orion could be, a, could be back where they were a couple years ago. And I think the Dragons could be a team that could, could be back in the thick of the conversation. So... Obviously, it'll be very interesting to see how Lake Orion does. The summer's the key for the Dragons, and I think it's going to be, that'll be the key for them, is can how they do in the summer. That's going to be the question mark there. Um, Oxford. When I look at the Wildcats, you lose Peyton Richter, you lose Brady Elling. Um, those are going to be big losses for Coach, for Coach um, Rachel Breyer. The good news, you have Allison Huffstedler coming back. Um, you have Mia Champagne, who had a decent year, her freshman year. Um, there were some moments she looked good. There were some moments that um, didn't look as good. But I think next year for Oxford, everything starts and ends with Allison Huffstedler. I mean, it really does. I mean, you do lose Brady Elling. You do lose Lexi Yankee. Um, those are going to be tough losses. For Oxford. It's going to be really tough losses there. But. 
when I look at the Wildcats, I think they could surprise some people next year. But I'll be curious to see how this team um, does this summer. Because I think this summer is going to be the key. I think a player to watch for is Tegan O'Connor for Oxford. The reason why I say that is she's got a, her work ethic is strong. She's a shot putter, a discus thrower um, in track and field. She's already got that mental mindset down. Um, I think she's going to be a player to really watch for next year and maybe in the next two years for Coach Pryor um, that I think she could do really well for the Wildcats. Is Can she you know, make that next step? Can she be that physical force? in the interior next year. Um, Because when I look at program strength with Oxford, um, there's some question marks. Um, Obviously, when it comes to program strength. Um, So that's something to really watch for for Coach Rachel Breyer next year is can they build program strength? That's the big question for Oxford. And I think that's something to really, really watch for um, going forward. And then there's Rochester. Um... Rochester, um, I did write a column about this. Um, they did let Bill Thurston go. Um, confirmed to me via text message. Um, you know, and there's a lot of questions here with Rochester because, and there's going to be a lot of questions with Rochester because with Thurston no longer there, um, you lose a guy who won 63 games, made the district final in all five years he's been coaching that program won a district title, and, you know, I don't know what happened over there. I don't know what happened, but, you know, it was a shock to me that Thurston was out over there at Rochester. Um, he did an incredible job over there. He really did. So whoever the new coach is is going to have some challenges ahead of him. Um, I mean, you do have Alice Max coming back. You do have her sister, Emma Max, who... It's expected to take on a much bigger role over at Rochester. Um, you have Kylie Robinson. Um, you have Lucy Cook. Um, Lucy Cook's a very interesting player. I mean, obviously, we know how good she is in track and field. Um, she's one of the best runners in the state when it comes to track and field. Um, you have Andrew Chachewski, who, um, who I thought had some moments. She looked good. Had some moments. She didn't. Um, but... When it comes to Rochester, the problem that they've always had has been guard play. That has been the biggest problem for Co- for Rochester is they have to figure out their guard situation. And obviously, the good news is you have a JV program that won 20 games. But the question was, is going to be, will Jeff Haney come back? Will he be on staff? I mean, there's just so many questions with Rochester that needs to be answered pretty much in the next two months. Who's going to lead that program? Who's going to, you know, who's going to be, you know, all the summer schedules going on. You got to look at that. And then now you got to look at, okay, how are you going to, you know, figure it out? How are you going to figure out, okay, how are things going to look, you know, for the new coach? I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions. With Rochester, there's a ton of questions surrounding them. And when I look at Rochester right now, um, they still got some concerns with the guards. Um, how are, how is Alice Max going to be? Kylie Robinson, how is she going to be? Um, just a lot of questions. Because when I looked at, when you look at what Thurston leave, departing, You know, I thought, honestly, I'll be honest with you, Thurston was one of those guys who was one of the best when it came to handling multi-sport athletes. I mean, obviously, and now he's no longer in the picture. So I'm going to be curious to see how the new coach does with this process. Could Rochester go um, look where Stony Creek did with Columbus Williams? Um, I don't think that's a good idea, but you never know what the, what the coaching shirts are going to have. 
Um, you know, could they could they take a crack at Kellen James? Who could they? It's possible. I mean, like, but I don't know what the interest is with him. But if I mean, like, but there's just so many questions when I look at with Rochester is where is the direction that team is gonna go? There are so many questions with Rochester. Is but you look at program strength, you know, it's there. You know what I mean? It is there. Um they have three programs. Um they have um you have two talented bigs for one more year. Um your guard situation is is gonna be the key. I mean, your guard situation is the key for Rochester. And if you can get that guard situation figured out, especially with the with the two twin towers next year, you're gonna have something over there at Rochester. I mean, there is talent over there. It's just the question's gonna be is can you know the question's gonna be is can the new coach, whoever it is, handle the guard situation? I mean, that is the big question. So a lot of questions when it surrounds Rochester. Um, obviously, when you look at the other teams around the league, um, Oak Park, they've got to address their scoring. Um, I think that's something for Coach um, Tyra Washington to address is can she address scoring over there at Oak Park? Ferndale University, they got a lot of experience coming back um, for Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, that is something to really watch for. Um, Avondale, they got a lot of experience coming back for Coach Roy Christman. Um, it's just, they got to stay healthy. That's really the key because it really, it really hurt their program strength this year was the, um, the injury bug. And that was really the one that really hurt them was the, um, was the program strength scenario there. Um, and then you look at the blue, obviously you look at, um, a and T. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech is a very interesting one. They've got to defend. Bottom line, this team has to defend. I mean, there were games where they just, they looked, they looked good. Um, but then defensively, it's like, what are you doing? You allowed 91 to Detroit Renaissance in the, um, in the postseason. And then you allowed 97 in a game this year against West Bloomfield. Now, albeit both those teams are good teams. But still, you can't allow that many points if you're going to be successful. Um, so, you coach Shakita Coltrane, you've got to address that area very carefully. Is that defensive side of the basketball? Troy Athens is interesting. I mean, they they do. Um, you know, I think to me, Troy Athens is a team that you know they were middle of the pack this year. Um. What is it going to take for, uh, I think when you look at Troy Athens, I think Alex Link needs to step up more. Um, they got others who can step up more as well. Um, but for Coach J.C. Klump, it's going to be interesting to see how Troy Athens does next year. It'll be really interesting to see how they do. And I think that'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Groves, I know they got a star player in the making over there. Um, it's important for Coach Allison Heidi to make the next step. You do lose Sierra Rocco, that's a big loss. Um, um, and then you have Harper Woods. Harper Woods. Um, curious to see where this team goes because this was a really funny team to figure out. Because there were some times that I thought that um Harper Woods just did not, you know, they looked good, but then there were some times they're going like, eh, I don't know about this team, you know what I mean? But they had no problem in their district. But they fell to Warren Fitzgerald in the um, regional semifinal. So there's a lot of questions I have with with Coach Latoya Tate's team and the Pioneers. A lot of questions there. Um, North Farmington, they lose a lot of talent. Um, you lose a C. Jihad. You lose an Aya Billups. You lose Hannah Hart. So it's going to be really three really tough players to replace. Um, Quincy Jihad is going to be a player I'm really high on next year for. Um, Coach Michael Allen. Um, so we'll see what happens there with them. Farmington had a really rough year this year. Um, they do lose, um, you know, they do lose Jayla Silver. It's going to be a big loss. They do have Eddie Murray King coming back. Um, but for Farmington, it's just trying to build that mindset back up and saying, like, you know, 
can you, you know, make, make the next step? So it'll be really interesting to see how all 23 of these teams do um, in the um, OA next year in the girls' basketball ranks. I mean, there's a lot of teams I think that can make some deep runs in the postseason. Just depends how the MHA places them in their districts. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, so we'll see what happens. Everybody, make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4050 at blogspot.com um, for the latest information around the OA. Um, we're going to keep an eye on the coaching situations over at um, for football at a uh, girls basketball at Rochester and Bloomfield Hills. Um, for bo for girls, boys at Sea Home, um, and then um, you know, and then of course we're gonna look at spring sports starting next week. So we'll see what happens. Um, 